Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotional. It's always good to have you here with us. Uh, this morning, we have Susie Brown sharing God's word with us and Noah Gilbert sharing worship song. So let's pray, asking God that you bless us and speak to us. Lord, we thank you for this new day, new morning. Thank you for people who are connected with us just now. I just pray for each one of them to be blessed, to be encouraged through the word of Susie Brown who will be shared with us. So, Lord, I just pray, asking your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. This is the best way to start our day. Be encouraged by brothers and sisters when they share or, or you have been speaking to them. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi, everyone. This is my third attempt. I hope it works. Anyway, I hope you're well and um, you're enjoying having a bit more freedom, being able to get out and, and meet up with people, maybe see family and meet up with friends. <clears throat> I certainly have been enjoying that. Um, anyway, I just wanted to um, share a bit of a testimony um, about myself and also talk about um, the kind of thing that came through to me was um, important thing was about having an eternal perspective and the key verse I want to look at is 1 Corinthians uh, 15 verse 19 um, which says if only for this life we have hope in Christ we are to be pitied more than all men. Um, before I became a Christian I was living a wild and quite hedonistic life from my early teens. Uh, eventually it caught up with me. I was out with some friends and I felt as if something burst in my head. Um, I was, con uh, yeah, and basically I thought this might be a brain hemorrhage and so I caught, so my friends that I was with called an ambulance. Uh, I was convinced I wouldn't make it through the night and uh, while I waited for a doctor to come I prayed and asked God to help me. I was worried uh, about my parents that they would be ashamed of the person that I had become um, if they read my diaries and as I lay there uh, waiting for the doctor uh, all the wrong things that I had done uh, went before me like a film and when the doctor finally came to see me he did some checks and he said he thought I would be okay, but I may have had a severe anxiety attack. Um, to this day, nothing like that has happened to me again, um, but God did help me. And uh, it's a long story, but a few weeks later, I made a decision to follow Jesus and I became a Christian and repented of all my sin. Um, I felt that I'd been given a second chance at life and uh, also had the joy of knowing as a Christian that, that I had eternity to look forward to. I'd been forgiven and it wasn't the end. Um, once I was following Jesus, every aspect of my life changed. I was part of a lively church in Essex and I met my husband, Nick, there. We found ourselves involved in leadership and after our first year of marriage, um, we we were leading various groups and then after our first son Johnny was born Nick became an elder my husband and we also had um, after Johnny we had two daughters Beth and Abby um, they're all grown up now in their 20s and uh, zipping forward a few years our children were five seven and nine at the time. Nick was a full-time elder of our church in Essex. Life was really busy for both of us and over the period of one week I became really sick and I was diagnosed with asthma. I started to struggle to breathe and every evening I had to go to out-of-hours doctors um, for nebulizers and uh, things just weren't improving after a week and I couldn't sleep uh, one night and I, I went downstairs so that Nick could sleep and I prayed and opened up my Bible and asked God to speak to me and I started to read Psalm 71 and I wrote down some of the verses from that Psalm and I'll just highlight those ones so as verse, verse 9 
um, says, do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. And then later on, it says again, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. And then verse 20, though you have made me see troubles many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honour and comfort me once again. So I, I wrote these things down and the next day my breathing became so bad that um, my friend who is a nurse at the surgery uh, came, came out to get me and took me to, to see my doctor and she called an ambulance straight away. Um, Nick was collecting the children from school at the time and uh, by later that evening all attempts to help me with oxygen and nebulizers were not working. Uh, in the early hours of the morning I remember committing my life to God and I chose life. I then stopped breathing and everything was a blur. <clears throat> I had to be ventilated for two days and after that they took me off the ventilator. It felt a big battle as I started to come round. I was very fearful and started to have a clear two-way dialogue with God. Um, it's not something that happens to me regularly but there have been specific times where I have felt um, just like God is right there next to me asking me things and on this occasion he asked me where my shield of faith was and I pointed to the ground and <clears throat> I felt he said you need that and I just said I hadn't the strength but would he help me um, then I was aware of two angels uh, warrior angels that came in um, to my to the room and over the bed that I was sleeping you know lying on and they were holding a shield the size of a door over me. Um, I had to trust God to take my fears and I spent many hours giving Nick and each of my children to God, um, trusting them to God and trusting that he could look after them. And that was whether I lived or died, I, I needed to know, I needed to trust him with them. And it was a long night and uh, it took it took many hours. And then I spent time praying for both of my brothers. Um, eventually, after over a week, I felt uh, a week in hospital, this was still still struggling with my breathing and on oxygen all the time and nebulizers all the time. Um, I just felt the Holy Spirit coming to me and saying to breathe in his pure oxygen. And I felt air going deep into my lungs <laughs> for ages. In a way, it was probably just like what it's like to breathe normally but because I hadn't been the the way that felt was just incredible it was like somebody was blowing into my lungs and uh, you know it reminds me that you know every breath we have is from from God and the next day I, I actually started to get up and move around and I was able to go home a few days later and uh, you know God had restored me and restored my family to me again People were praying for, for me far and wide and, uh, you know, the church was helping to care for my children and my husband and providing meals. And it was, you know, it was a great, a great time of, of people loving us. Um, it wasn't an immediate healing. I was very weak for six months at least after this time. And uh, I heard someone say recently that we grow more in the valleys than we do on the mountain tops, you know. That, uh, that our roots go, go deeper and we, we learn a lot through those times. <clears throat> I couldn't do it all and be superwoman and God loved me in my incapable state and he still does. Um, when I got home, I, I searched for my journal to see what I'd written and those verses in Psalm 71 that I, that I read out really were exactly what had happened to me. I felt that... Um, I had been in the depths of the earth and that he had brought me back up again, um, which was a great blessing. But I suppose hearing stories of people with coronavirus um, in the last few months has reminded me of this struggle that I had. And I just know from experience, um, he is close to those who are in the valley of the shadow of death. 
and he sorry and he can bring them he can bring them through um, but if not um, that you know if they don't come through there is life after this life and that's the most important thing it's not just this life we're thinking about it's the next Jesus is the eternal one so I want to encourage people to get their focus right and as I said last time I did a devotion um, be filled up with the Holy Spirit uh, ready like those wise virgins um, and there was just a verse I wanted to share as well um, 1 John 5 verse 20 and it says uh, we know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true even in the Son in his Son Jesus Christ he is the true God and eternal life so I just want to pray for, for those who are going through trials like this and the coronavirus struggles that our country are going through so please just join me i hope this has been encouraging i hope this speaks to somebody um just just to think about you know eternity okay let's pray okay lord i just want to pray for for everybody at this time lord there are emotional struggles there are physical struggles and um i just pray for for everyone who's in those valleys maybe even in the valley of the shadow of death, who, who just wonders what, what's going on, that you'd be very close to them, God. I know that you can speak to people who are, who are in that valley and you can give them your word, which is a light to their feet. And God, I just pray for the coronavirus uh, s struggles that this country is going through. Every person who is maybe in hospital or is recovering from coronavirus, that you would give them uh, your healing touch, that you would bring them through, you'd bring them out the other side, you'd restore them to families and to friends and God that you'd just breathe on this country, you'd breathe your Holy Spirit on this nation and that you would just blow away this coronavirus from, from us and that you would heal our land and Jesus that you'd give us an eternal perspective. In Jesus name, Amen. And I've heard a thousand stories of what think you like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love, the dead of night and the tell that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Thank you.
Thank you very much for uh, Gilbert family. <laughs> I mentioned just Noah because Noah was leading this song, but Rachel and Tim, thank you very much guys for this amazing song. Also Susie Brown, thank you very much for this powerful word, testimony and sharing from your heart. It's a lovely to have brothers and sisters here sharing um, a real kind of Christian life and sometimes being a Christian we think uh, we cannot have problems because uh, uh, everything is under Jesus control and we are Christians we have a faith no it doesn't work really like that uh, sometimes God allow us to have some experience to speak to us to show himself to us to reveal himself to us so I'm sure you've been learning from your ex own experiences. So normally I don't do this, what I'm going to do now, but uh, I don't announce who will be sharing the next day. But tomorrow, Friday, the last day of the week, daily devotional, um, we're going to have a Paul Lynch sharing with us God's word. Is, uh, is a good to, to have a Paul sharing. He's a very prophetic guy and God has been using him in a very powerful way. I'm sure if you get a connect with us tomorrow, half past 10 in our daily devotional, Paul Lynch will be with us and also, also Jackie Elmore will be sharing God's word with us. So I hope you have a blessed day. Hope to see you tomorrow. Yes, see you tomorrow. Half past 9. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.